Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys a network update from T-Mobile, but a different network update this time around. So T-Mobile 5G, everything you need to know about T-Mobile's 5G network. All we've heard over the last few years is 5G, 5G, 5G. What about the LTE network? There is still 70 plus percent of T-Mobile's entire total base on an LTE device. What about that network? Nobody's talking about that network anymore. T-Mobile doesn't bring it up at conferences, at earnings uh, calls. It's, it's like it doesn't exist anymore. So over the last several days, I've been testing T-Mobile's LTE network on an iPhone 2020 SE. Now, I know that's not necessarily the best top-notch device to test with, but it gave me an idea as to what I was looking for and what I was trying to get out of that testing. So to give you guys a, just a quick backstory, El Paso, Texas, 52% market share T-Mobile. And that just increased with all the Sprint share that they gained with the merger. So there, oh, that means over 50% of this market uses T-Mobile, which that's a lot. That's a lot of people on what is virtually still the same grid. I know I've shown you guys some co-locations and a couple of Sprint Keep sites, but at scale, at large, it's virtually still the same tower grid. So I've been testing that network, driving different sides of town, uh, covering miles of, of certain radius around areas. And I could tell you guys, <laughs> once again, get you a 5G device. That LTE network is shot, it is done. T-Mobile just no longer cared for it after that 2017 purchase of the 600 megahertz. So how that kind of transpired, 600 megahertz was, was purchased and then T-Mobile needed to let that clear in, in several phases. I believe it was like four phases that that spectrum needed clearance. So 17, 18, 19, all those years, most of that CapEx went towards deployment of 600 megahertz. That's why T-Mobile's 5G network is larger on, at scale because they've invested, I mean, close to over that three-year period, around 15 billion went into 600 megahertz deployments. And everything else pretty much stopped, came to a complete halt. The 2016 purchase orders weren't fulfilled for further densification, so they, they stopped densifying that LTE network. And I can tell you guys right now, it was a very, very small percentage in my testing that I was able to achieve over 20 megabits a second on that network. Very small percentage. Most of the times I was at two, three, four megabits. Sometimes it peaked at 10. And then in very rare occasions, I was able to peak past 20, 25. That was very rare, very small percentage. Now at nighttime, when I, did, when I tried to replicate that same test, I was able to shoot past 100, 200 megabits a second. But that was only at night when the network had less usage on it. Now, just for quick reference, of course, with that 5G spectrum, which is, I can guarantee you guys now, or I can tell you with more confidence, that's what saved T-Mobile was that spectrum. It wasn't, it wasn't the Sprint Keep sites, because you got to remember, those are, those are virtually per market going to add very small percentage of densification. That 10,000 plus keep sites that they want to build out, that's, a, that's spread out through the entire United States. If you think about how large the United States is per market, that could only be four or five additional sites, literally. So again, the LT network, it, it's bad. It's really bad. I tested it in two variations. I did the uh, speed testing, and then I also did some YouTube streams at 1080p. I, I, didn't, I didn't even go to 4K. And I'm telling you guys right now, it was a buffer, buffer fest. Just buffering. It played for a little bit, and then it buffered for, for about five minutes, and then it played again. It was just terrible. Now, that 5G network, completely different. In those same areas two 300 megabits no problem no problem at all 
So will that eventually slow down? Yes, I think it will eventually slow down. But for now, if you are on T-Mobile and you want that user experience back where you can just go click on something and it loads, get a 5G device. You just have to do it. And I know there are some areas uh, in your guys' markets where you can achieve, still achieve two, 300 megabits a second on LTE. I can do that here. I, I found... I found like two, three sites that, that were unloaded during the day. I, I pulled 100 megabits on LTE, but that is very, very rare. I can't stress that enough. That is super rare. And I wish you guys could be here and, and so I could give you guys the, uh, show you guys the difference. Verizon continued to densify the LTE network. They had, they knew they were going to purchase that C-band at some point. But what did they do? They continued to densify the network. And I wish I could show you guys how much more densification and work they put in to keep their LTE network running at that 20, 30, 40, 50 megabits a second. Which the last time I used Verizon, I was able to pull that no problem. I know there, there were some areas where they had experienced some slowdown. But I could tell you guys right now, just the confidence in that team, they're looking at those areas. There's fixes coming. Small cells new sites, they are always densifying the network, always. Whereas T-Mobile, they stopped. They completely stopped densifying that, that LTE network and they became reliant on Spectrum. Like I said, 600 was added. That whole CapEx pretty much went towards that. Then in 2020, they started deploying that 2.5. In the meantime, they didn't really add any insane densification. Like on a per market basis, there is no way you could sit there and say that T-Mobile added 20% more densification. That didn't happen. It's not happening yet. It's not part of their plan. Everything that you see in large numbers is spread out through the United States, and it really depends on a per market basis. They're not going to deploy like 500 small cells in an area where they only have 20% or 10% market share. That focus is going to go towards markets that have 30, 40, 50% market share. The bigger markets, the New York City, Chicago, uh, Phoenix, El Paso, that, those are the areas where the small cells are going to be big. But again, that additional 35,000 small cells that they're deploying, if you spread that out throughout the entire United States, the top 100 PEAs, that number gets smaller and smaller per market. Same with the sites. Verizon, on the other hand, they have about 70,000 small sales planned in, in a similar time frame. So their per market numbers look much bigger. They're still going to deploy two to 3,000 tower sites per year. So their per market numbers look much bigger. So the deployments are, they differ, they do differ. T-Mobile's is more spectrum focused. They want to slap spectrum on sites. They made that clear. LTE is done. That's finished. You can forget LTE. Once they have 35, 40, 45, 50% usage on 5G, they're going to start they're going to start refarming that LTE spectrum. I guarantee. I guarantee it. They'll start off with that on DSS and then eventually they'll start refarming that spectrum and dedicate it to 5G. So that LTE network is going to be very thin. It's going to be very thin. Now as they go to that standalone core 5G and they start moving users off of that LTE network, uh, the LTE core, that LTE is going to start picking up in speed. But I guarantee you, right around that same time when LTE starts picking up in speed, they're going to start trimming, uh, refarming that spectrum, and it's going to be, it's going to go to 5G. So, to kind of end the network, I mean the the video. 5G, get get you a 5G device if you are in a position to do so. Again, I'm just recommending if you want to keep your LTE device, that's fine too. But if you can get a deal to where that LTE device is paid off and it, it has good value in terms of money and you trade it in, you get a 5G phone for free, please do it. I'm telling you guys right now, the difference is night and day, literally, not just, in, not just the, as the saying goes. It's, it's in a literal sense. It's a night and day difference. That network is different on 5G because of the spectral assets. The speeds, everything, it's just better on that 5G network. 
So let me know what you think about this. Let me know about your experience on LTE in your market. I, I'm telling you guys right now that network is slowing down. And I don't even want to test that in, in a market like a, a Chicago or a New York City where, where the crowd is much larger. So again, let me know in the comment section down below your experience on T-Mobile's LTE network. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel, follow the social media outlets for more updates and interaction. Uh, happy Football Sunday. Some good playoff games today. I hope you guys get to check them out. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next one. Please. Peace.